Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, I am going to solve multi-period production planning problem using IBM MyLogo PLC Flex Studio. And the model which I am uh, considering for the multi-period production planning problem is a linear programming problem where we have the total cost which we want to minimize it. And the total cost is equal to the inside production cost plus we have the outsource cost plus we have the holding cost. And uh, in inside production cost, the quantity we are representing, which is with respect to Q, P, uh, T, and the superscript is I, basically that is in indicating the inside production quantity of a particular product in time period T. Similarly, we have Q, O, P, T, that is basically representing the outsource production quantity of a particular product in time period T. We have I, P, T, that is basically indicating the inventory quantity of a particular product in time period T. Whereas CIP as well as COP as well as HP. So these are indicating the per unit cost against those decision variable. So we have three types of decision variable. One is inside production quantity. Another is we have the outsource production quantity. And the third one we have the inventory, uh, inventory quantity of a particular product in a time period. So that means we have two types of indices right now that is uh, discussed in the objective function. The first one is P that is representing different types of product. T is representing different type of time periods, right? And then uh, in addition to this particular objective function, which is minimizing the total cost, we have the three set of constraints which we are considering. One is a capacity constraint. So CAPR is representing the capacity of a particular resource. And then Q, uh, P, T, I, that is inside production quantity. Okay, so, so A, R, P is representing the amount which we are using of a resource R in order to produce a product P. Okay, so that the sum that must be less than or equal to the capacity of that particular resource for all the resources in every time period. Similarly, we have the, the second set of constraint is basically the inventory balancing constraint. And the first part is basically indicating the initial inventory that is basically the time inventory in the last time period plus the uh, inside production quantity plus we have the out uh, source production quantity must be equal to the demand of this period plus inventory in this particular time period. So IPT minus one is basically, basically the inventory quantity available in the last time period. Okay. So this is the inventory balancing constraint. And the third one we have basically the initial inventory uh, condition that is for every uh, product, the initial inventory, how much we have available. So that is the uh, multi-period production planning problem we want to solve using IBM iLog OPL CPLEX Studio. So in order to solve that in IBM iLog OPL CPLEX Studio, so as you know that first of all, we need to create a project. How we can do that? Uh, we should go to file, new OPL project. We should write down the name where we want to save it. And then we can add the description if we want. And then in order to create a, a project, first of all, we need to create a model because that is where we will write down the code. And in order to solve that model, we need the run configuration. So we will select that one. And similarly, if we are going to define the data set as a separate in a separate file, then we need to create the data. So I have already created this one. So we have created the model file as well as data file as well as the default configuration, which is this one. That is the name of the project multi period production planning. Okay, this is the model file dot mod dot data that is basically the data file and we have the default configuration name which is a configuration one so in order to write down the code so in a model file i will always start from the indices okay so the first indices we have p and then we have t as well as r so where p is representing the products t is representing the time period r is representing the resources so we have defined these three things okay so i have in order to define the products i use a set string type of products and we have three types of product as you can know that in my previous videos i use basically the double quotes whenever i am writing down the string and then i am separating uh, every product with comma 
so you can use that approach or either you can use this particular approach which i am using right now so that means there is no need to write uh, the string in double quotes just write down the name then space the second the third okay similarly we have defined as resources so we have two types of resources one is floor another is egg and we have defined the integer type of time period in and we are defining the range okay now that is from one to so on if you are not defining this one then again you need to define it from set okay uh, similar like this one and then you can define up to one two three but uh, as i am defining int number period and then i'm indicating in a range then we can write down only the three so that means from one to three okay the next thing we need to define is the parameter and the data so we define all three indices p g as well as r now we are going to define the parameters and the data and what are they we need to define the per unit production cost which we are bearing inside uh, similarly outsource production cost per unit holding cost per unit similarly we have the capacity of every resource the cons consuming which we are in order to produce a particular product which is arp similarly the demand of a particular product in a time period and what is the initial inventory of every product we have available at the initial stage so in order to do that the first of all this is basically arp uh, parameter okay that is basically this one arp which i am writing down the consumption of a particular resource in order to produce a particular product which is a two dimensional array that is a flow type and we are defining that is this one so this is basically for resource one so that is how much quantity we needed of a resource one in order to produce a product one how much quantity we needed of a resource one in order to produce the second product quantity similarly how much quantity of the resource one we needed to produce a third type of product quantity similarly this is for the second resource okay so this is basically the consumption one then we have defined the capacity of every resource so we have two types of resource one is floor and egg how much quantity we have available that is basically the capacity we have available of every particular resource then we have the demand of a particular product time period which is again a two dimensional this is regarding uh, product one in time period one two and three so we have three time periods okay similarly uh, for the second time period uh, for the second product demand this is a third product demand in time period one two and three okay next what we have defined we have defined the inside production cost that is cpi okay that is this one so how much production quantity we are bearing against the three product that is this one sorry that is this one similarly the outsource production quantity okay this is similarly uh, in three time periods um, what is the for all the three products what is the holding cost per unit and then uh, what is the initial inventory available of all three products that is basically these parameters and the data so this is basically the inside cost this is outside cost this is inventory available at the start of the period of every product and then uh, which we will use in our th for the third constraint and this is basically the inventory cost okay once we have defined the indices we have defined the parameter and the, and the data now we need to define the decision variable as we know that we can use the keyword d bar which is dis defined variable float plus plus is indicating that we are going to solve the linear programming and the decision variable must be positive so that is due to this plus so this is uh, q uh, p t i so that is the first inside production quantity this is q o p t so this is um, i p t okay but the uh, the difference is here we are writing down time periods time periods and but right now we are writing down zero to that is number of um, you can say number of uh, periods so why we are you starting from zero over here instead of writing down periods as you know that uh, when we are writing down periods so that means the value will start from one but because the second set of constraint that is basically the inventory balancing constraint so we have i p t minus one so that means we need to get the value of zero because 
when we are in a time period one so what's the initial inventory available at the start at the start of month one okay or whatever the time period we are considering so that's where we have to define zero to number of periods okay so these are the three decision variables the next thing we need to define the objective function so in order to define the objective function we can write down minimize some peen product team time period so this is basically the inside production quantity this is outsource production quantity this is the inventory um, cost okay so we have the uh, three types of uh, two types of production quantities as well as the inventory cost the next one we are defining the uh, constraints the first is the capacity constraint so we are saying for all r and t okay that is for all r and resources t in time periods sum against every product this is how much quantity we are consuming to produce product p okay that is the in multiply by the qipt must be less than or equal to the capacity of the resource okay the second set of constraint we are writing down, down that is basically the inventory balancing constraint that is for all p and t so we are saying for all p in products t in time periods so this is the inventory balancing constraint that is inventory in the last period production quantity inside outsource production quantity must be equal to the demand plus inventory in this time period and lastly we have the initial inventory constraint that is basically this one ip not is equal to ip that is how much initial inventory available of every particular product which we have defined that is 000 okay so once we have written down the constraint so this is the complete model so now we are able to solve this problem how we can do that we will drag and drop the model as well as the data file in a configuration right click on our configuration run this okay cplex is start solving it okay as you can see that once the cplex is solving okay now we get the solution so what's the solution so the objective function is 457 so that is the optimum solution they are saying and the quantity which is qip this is basically regarding uh, product one in time period one two three product two which is an inside uh, quantity of product two in time period one two three similarly product three similarly this is for the outsourcing for product one in all three time periods product two product three and this is the inventory quantity okay and the objective function is 457 so let's do another thing which is basically the post processing that means i want to write in a script and i want to write down in a uh, tuple way output so what's the tuple way that is uh, instead of uh, getting the answer in different arrays okay so i am getting into the uh, tuple form how we can do that uh, so that is for that i am defining a tuple after the model so plan then all the variables in uh, which we want to get the answer which is inside okay which we have defined earlier outside and inventory quantity so i have written down this one so then plan that is the name of the tuple again plan with capital p okay that is the name of, you can say the variables the value it will be represented so p in product team time period then this is basically the inside quantity outside quantity of a product p in time period t and this is the inventory okay once we have defined this tuple okay then we can execute this plan so that is basically we are saying uh, must show us the value of the plan okay for every product in every time period the quantity of uh, inside quantity outside quantity as well as inventory okay so once we run this one okay again right click run it okay in a script block okay after writing this execute block so once cplex solve this problem so you can see from the script log so we are getting the optimum solution of the objective function is 457 which we have seen earlier okay so this is basically representing uh, for a time period one uh, inside outside inventory for time period two inside outside inventory for time period three inside outside inventory similarly for 
the second time period all the variable for the third time period i hope you understand how we can solve the multi period production planning problem using ibm i know of here cplex studio thank you so much please do subscribe this channel thank you so much